Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you guys how to use constructors inside of C++ classes. Now, a constructor is a basically a special function that is gonna get called whenever we create an object of a class. So let me show you guys uh, basically how this works. So down here, or actually up here, I have this class, it's called book. And if you're following along with the course, we created this class in the last tutorial. And basically this book class is just sort of a blueprint or a specification for what a book is inside of our program. So, uh, you know, a book has a title, has an author and it has pages, awesome. So then down here, we actually created some book objects and an object is just an instance of a class. So we have book one and book one has a title, it's a Harry Potter book and an author and pages and all that stuff. So I'm gonna show you guys where constructors come into play. So a constructor, like I said, it's essentially just a function that's gonna get called whenever we create one of these book objects. So up here, I'm actually going to go ahead and create a constructor. And the way we can, cre we can create a constructor is just by essentially creating a function for this program. So I'm just gonna say book, and I'm gonna make an open and close parentheses and an open and close curly bracket. And essentially what we have here is a constructor. So this is a special function now, which is gonna get called whenever we create a book object. So let me prove that to you guys. I'm just gonna print something out and I'll just say creating object. And then we also wanna print a new line. So down here, I'm creating two objects. I'm creating book one and I'm creating book two. Whenever I create a new object, you guys are gonna see that this function up here is gonna get called. So let me run this program. And you'll see over here, it says creating object twice. So it says creating object, and that was when we made this line of code. And then down here, it also says creating object, and that was when we created this second object. So we created two objects, and this method, or this function got called twice. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, another cool thing about this book function is that it can accept parameters. So I could come over here and we could say that this is gonna accept a parameter like name. And over here, I could just print out like whatever the user passed in. So now down here, when we create these objects, we can pass values in. So I could pass in like Harry Potter, that's the name of this book. And we could pass in like Lord of the Rings, that's the name of this book, right? So now when I run my program, it's going to actually be able to use those parameters. So instead of printing out like um, creating object, it's printing out the value that we passed into the constructor. Pretty cool, right? And constructors are awesome because we can use them when we create objects. So let me point something out to you guys. And I'm actually just gonna get rid of this stuff up here. Um, so let me point something out. When we wanted to create these objects, right? And when I wanted to give them a bunch of initial information. So when I created book one and book two, I had to manually specify what the title was gonna be, what the author was gonna be, and what the pages were gonna be. And it kind of took up a lot of time, right? It takes a lot of time to have to manually type out book one dot title, book one dot author. And I have to do that for every single object that I create. Well, that gets really, really tedious. And imagine if instead of just creating two objects, I wanted to create like a hundred or a thousand objects. Like that would take up so many lines of code. I mean, just to create one of these objects took up four lines of code. We can actually use these constructors in order to initialize our objects with information. So like when I create this book one, instead of having to manually specify the title, the author and the pages, instead I could just pass those values into the constructor and the constructor could initialize the values for us. So let me show you guys how we can do that. Up here in our constructor, I'm going to specify that this constructor is gonna take three values. So this book constructor is gonna take a string title. And actually, we're just gonna call this a title. It's gonna take a string and we're gonna call it a author. And it's gonna take an integer, we're just gonna call it a pages. And I'm putting this A here. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing it so it's kind of easy for us to see what's going on. A is just gonna stand for argument. So this will be like the title that's an argument. All right, so down here, what I can do is I can actually assign the values of title, author, and pages to the values that we passed in. So down here, we're assigning the values of title, author, and pages to all of this information. 
But instead of having to do it down here, I could just do that up here in the constructor. So I could say that the title is going to be equal to a title. So in other words, the title of the object, the title that we want to store for this specific book is going to be equal to the title that gets passed in. I could do the same thing for the author. So I could say author is going to be equal to a author and pages is going to be equal to a pages. And again, you don't have to name these a title, a author, a pages. You can name them whatever you want. Um, I'm just kind of doing this so it's more obvious as far as what's going on. So down here, what I can do now, whenever I create this object, I need to pass it a title, an author, and a number of pages. So if I tried to run my program right now, you'll see we're getting an error. And we're basically getting an error because we didn't pass in these values. So what I can do is I can actually take the title, I can take the author, and I can take the number of pages, so 500, and I can pass them into this constructor. Then I can just get rid of all this code because we don't need it anymore. And I'll do the same thing for the Lord of the Rings book. So I can, and we can pass in the number of pages. And so now we can get rid of all this stuff. So we went from having eight lines of code to create two objects. So now we just have two lines of code. And now when I run my program, we should be able to essentially just give this object a bunch of initial information. So let's go ahead and print out this stuff so you can kind of see what happens. So I'm just going to see out, why don't we see out book one dot title and let's see what we get. So we should get um, Harry Potter, which we do. So we did exactly what we were doing before, except we were able to do it a lot easier and a lot cleaner now by using this constructor. So this was a very, very powerful tool for us to use. Now I also do want to point out we could still modify these. So I could still say like book one dot title and I could change the title. So I could change the title to whatever I want and it'll be updated. Really all we're doing with this constructor here is we're just making it a lot easier. So we're essentially just making it easier for us to initialize a uh, object with different values. So that's sort of the basics of using constructors. And I'll show you guys one more thing we can do. You can actually create multiple constructors. So I could create this constructor that will essentially just allow us to take in um, a title and author and a number of pages. But let's say that for some books, we wouldn't want to include one of those uh, attributes. I can make another constructor over here. And this constructor, for example, won't take in any parameters. And I could just give these values like initial value. So I could basically just say like title is equal to no title, author is equal to no author. And we could also say like pages is equal to zero. So this is basically just giving this object like some initial information if we don't pass anything in. So now what I could do is I could come down here and I could create another book. So I could say like book and we'll call this book three. And I now I don't have to pass in this information. So if I want, I can just do that and we could print out like book three dot title and it's going to be that title that we gave it. And this needs to be capital. Whoops. So now you see we get no title. So a lot of times people will create multiple constructors. You're basically giving the user multiple ways that they can create your uh, object. But I'd say the most common scenario um, is going to be this where you pass in all of the attributes and then they basically just get assigned. So that's the basics of constructors. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, constructors are very useful. So you're definitely going to want to use them in your uh, C++ classes. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.